welcome back to my youtube channel now this video will be a continuation from where we left out previously we talked about semiconductor material that could make semiconductor and uh, the extrinsic semiconductor how I'm going to make p-type or n-type from uh, silicon as parent compound now I'm going to talk about the real deal how do, are you going to use this silicon to make a diode or in your reference text it's semicon diode okay now um, how does it look like I mean in some book in most of the book that you are referenced or text it would look like this a triangle the symbol and then followed by a straight line followed by another line okay so you need to really find out I mean recognize this this is the symbol for diode and and you connect this side to the positive terminal and the line straight line here is for negative terminal or in some reference or text they will draw you the actual the f actual diode it look like a resistor the black is in black and you have a silver line at one end or a white line at one end and this represents the negative terminal okay so that's how you distinguish maybe I draw it black okay okay so this is this is how the um, diode should look like okay now how is being made okay how is being made it is actually a combination of the P type and the N type semiconductor if you were to make into a P type so if you manage to make a p-type semicon for p-type semicon the major carrier that I've actually stated out earlier would be a hole okay so you have lots of hole in the lattice okay meaning that's it I mean you do it with a group 13 uh, element and what happened next would be you join the P type with the N type I mean you put them side by side an interface for them to join them you join it with the N type where in N type you have a lot of holes I mean you have electrons as the major carrier okay so you have lots of electron because you dope it with group 15 element so you have extra and electron per atom okay so if you put it together side by side attach them I mean it's in 3d okay in three dimension this block okay okay now what happened initially when t is zero initially time is, is zero second it is in its own state p type and n type but as time goes on and on what happened the n type will become more positive how is that so and the p-type will become more negative now how is it so when the positive uh, the hole and electron comes near together what happened the electron would hope into the hole all the electron will hope into, into the hole okay and then the electron next to it adjacent to it will take its place and then will hope into the hole And 
this process continues until a time where t equals to well certain amount of second n second it's not nanosecond it's a certain amount of uh, second 10 or 20 seconds what happened is said to be in equilibrium the same material then what happened try to make it the same length what happened it would achieve the electron would now be okay take this place already and then leaving behind holes or I think I'll put it as positive represents whole positive positive the positive 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 and positive but what happened was this is positive then the rest is re the original electron okay the same goes with the other side this end will still have your holes or your positive and this is still the same uh, block 3D. Okay. What happened at equilibrium? I mean, I want to focus at this area. Okay, this region. This region. called the equilibrium state at equilibrium and the form this is called the uh, if you care to look online what does it mean it's called the depletion layer depleted layer or depletion layer this is at equilibrium What does it mean? It means it means that at equilibrium you form a depletion layer. So what happened? This layer will prevent it will prevent further electron from hopping into the N from the N type to the P type. No further electron could hope over to the P type at equilibrium. Okay? Because of that, because of this nature, one has to actually provide. Okay, this is interesting. You need to provide. Let's say you connect this end positive. You connect it to the positive and not. Negative to the negative. you should have at least I mean if you want to put it into a, a graph form and from a reference text you see a graph right you have a current in milliamp and voltage as in volt for silicon you need to provide at least 0 0.7 volt okay this is for the case of silicon what it means here is that if you have depletion layer at equilibrium in order for electron to further flow across it you must overcome the potential caused by the depletion layer so when last time we have learned potential energy electrical potential energy it's actually voltage V symbol is actually work done per unit charge so 
So, in order to bring an electron to hop over it, you must provide at least 0 0.7 you need to provide 0 0.7 Joule per electron. If you want to bring ele one electron over, you must have at least 0.7 volt. Okay? Now, if you manage to get germanium as a compound instead of silicon, if it were to be germanium, then it's lower. For germanium, that would be about 0.1 volt. Okay? It's front and end, it is the same negative, that would be. Okay? This is for case for germanium. And of course, it's very expensive because it's so rare as compared to silicon. As I mentioned in the previous video, you can get silicon from sand. But germanium is a rare earth that is very hard to find. That's why uh, it's expensive, but it is very efficient. You need only 0.1 volt, then your diode will start to work. Okay. Now, for this kind of configuration, positive to positive, positive to the hole, this is called the forward bias. forward bias configuration forward bias meaning this is positive this is the hole right this is the anode the positive to anode negative to cathode then this is called the um, positive to positive negative to negative that's forward bias however if you were to negative bias, meaning you positive to negative, negative to positive, what happened? This gap would be widened and therefore it doesn't work. So this diode doesn't work. That is for reverse bias. If you positive to negative, so what happened? This gap will be widened and therefore your diode will not work. So in order for silicon diode to work, you need to have forward bias okay so you may uh, actually go through your reference text now pause this video and uh, look at the uh, explanation of for uh, reverse bias it's actually if you were to reverse bias it this gap would be widened because if you were to provide more electron here then what happened the gap then this side will become more negative the p-type will become more negative the n-type will become more positive then the gap here is so much widen, I mean so much larger now and therefore electron cannot actually pass through it okay so uh, that's actually the uh, explanation so I help you out with your explanation I mean with your reading so you would like to actually go through your um, chapter by chapter exercise workbook objective question maybe you want to try out about eight to ten questions before you proceed to the to my next video you might need to have at least uh, three or four workbook for you to do I mean to perform the exercise so that you get a better understanding of how to actually use those concepts all right if this is first time watching my video kindly subscribe to my channel and I appreciate the thumbs up stay tuned to my next video